Greetings, everybody. My name is Alex Mabridge here from the Bentley Bridge Group, and this is a new session of our special interest group for Bridge. And for today, what we have for you is using the Bridge model after the design process. And this is uh, the agenda that we're going to be covering today. So basically, we're going to be reviewing what is the overview of how you apply OpenBridge Designer or OpenBridge in short for the workflow that we need, how we deal with evaluation of alternatives, what is the plans production capabilities of OpenBridge, can we do rebar detailing with it, you know, uh, how we add extra beam properties, even visualization or construction planning. Remember, the idea is that on this assumption that we're doing for this uh, presentation is that our bridge model is complete, right? So the workflow that has happened after, of course, you got the bridge completed is that you have to create what we call the physical model, right? And for some people to understand that, yes, it's a 3D model, right? Uh, yes, it's a big model <laughs> as well. So. This is the physical model, and we call it physical because this is the bridge that is going to be constructed into the field with all the details possible, you know, all the architectural uh, elements that you may want to apply, for example, to your columns, all the decorative elements, the barrier for the specific DOT that you want to design, not, not just a generic one. You want to use the Floria DOT barrier number one or the Virginia BR3 barrier, for example, to say something. So it's exactly what you're going to be constructing on the field. And that's what we call the physical model. Then, of course, you need to design that bridge, right? So when you design that bridge, this is goes to an analytical solution. And then this physical model gets internally transferred to our analytical solutions, meaning Libridge Concrete, Libridge Steel, RM Bridge, again, all depending on what type of, uh, of bridge you're doing, right? So obviously you can even use your own solution here, right? Maybe you don't use some Bentley analytical solutions. Yeah, you can use your own, but think about it. You are missing on that automated process of synchronization between the two models. Because if some uh, modifications is needed on the analytical one, I would rather the software communicating each other and updating my physical model than wait for a manual update and maybe re-enter that information into my final model as well, right? So it's a big advantage of having this integrated workflow that OpenBridge can provide to you. Now, this analytical model, of course, will be different than the physical model because we don't put that heavy details into our analytical calculations. But the software understands that and makes the proper uh, assumptions to properly design our structure. And it is from the analytical model when we got reports, right? But stresses, forces, moment diagrams, areas of steel that we generate. But again, that information is transferred one more time to the physical model. That physical model, I'm talking then our model import, a DGN file. That is with the final repository of that 3D model a microstation or a DGN file. And it's that from that 3D DGN file that you generate your drawings. And I'm, I'm saying here generate drawings because we don't need to draft anymore. We just actually view the bridge in a different way, right? So what do you mean by that, Alex? <laughs> well, I mean, I view it in a different way because if I got a 3D model and I extract a view from the top of the bridge, so basically I'm getting a plan view, right? Well, that's my plan view for the bridge. You know, if I cut a section across the bridge, oh, I have the typical section then. So again, there is no need to do manual drafting anymore 
because my plan sheets now are basically extractions, dynamic extractions from the model. And it will be that model as well that I can use for 3D or for 3D and finally 2D detailing. It's from that model that I will get my quantity reports. And it's from that model as well that I will get my geometric reports. Because as we follow alignment profiles, my 3D model, it's completely accurate regarding geometry. So if I need to read an elevation, I just snap to the screen and I got the coordinates and the elevations of that particular bridge element. If I want more automated reports like deck elevations, of course I can do it too. Right? So all the bridge geometry is solved right here in the middle when I go and do the 3D physical model there. Right? Now, what else I can do? Of course, through the when I finish this automated process of extracting sheets, annotating, and all of that, I can get the 3D model and being sent now to construction, to an inspection, um, permitting. So now maybe it's uh, out of our hands as designers, uh, because now it's transferred maybe to the owner, maybe the DOT that takes care of the inspection operations, or maybe the contractor to construct the bridge as well. So we assume in this um, presentation that I completed the bridge. So then what can I do with it? Well, one of the main usage I would say, even before completing any design, is with Open Bridge Designer, is to do all of this, to say, I need to collaborate and bring information and send the information out to all the disciplines that are needed, right? When I finish my bridge, I can share that information with the civil guys. Through Open Roads, they can reference my bridge and fill that gap between roadways where my bridge is supposed to be. I can share my information with the structural engineer so they can design with Libridge Concrete, Libridge Steel, or RM Bridge, or I can start the detailing process of that bridge. Even if I don't have a structural calculations, maybe from past experience, I know what type of bars do I'm going to need, what type of reinforcement I'm going to place, right? And even without calculations, I can start that reinforcing project because it's easier to modify. I don't need to wait for information. I can start the project very early if I want to. Now, what bridge then? Concrete or steel? Pre-stress beams or maybe a segmental? Who knows? So what? one thing that you can do fairly quick is the evaluation of alternatives. What is the best alternative for your project? So you can first visualize your project pretty quick. We are designing really in space, not a blank space, actually in a geographical space. We know where we're placing our bridge. We know the ground conditions. We know the real coordinates. So we can plan for that. We can plan for different elements. You know, is it more efficient to do a single pier than a double pier? Right? Should I make it the beam the steel beam here, straight or hunch, right? So I can visualize many different options, even getting help not only for the bridge itself, but maybe from tools like context capture, right? Getting aerial images to place my bridge in a real design context. And then get quantities, right? So what is cheaper? Do the bridge in concrete, doing the bridge in a steel, what number of spans? Do I need to change the number of spans? And it, this is just as a simple matter, and let me switch to a live screen here, that to go to bridge and say, look, that is a pre-stress girder bridge that I did. Um, maybe I need to switch it to steel, but then let me check how much this bridge will cost. So I can go, as the bridge is finished, I can go to open bridge quantities report and just say submit. And I got the quantities as desegregated as I want it to be, and if I assign cost to it, I can just get the final price of that bridge. And all of that could be customized because when I go into my materials library here, I can define all these uh, different elements of concrete or steel that I want to use, 
and apply a unit price for each element, right? Cubic yards of concrete, cubic meters of concrete, up to you in the units, some physical properties too. And when I calculate the bridge, I know how much is going to cost, I would say material wise, right? I know that uh, in your decisions to do this, right, as we go through the different options, not only in material matters, right, but the, hey, you know, it's a good place to start, right? So maybe this is close enough. I would say still is looking cheaper here, right? But then, then again, it's a good place to start. But then you can also very quick start weighting some factors. What about maintenance on steel? What about maintenance on concrete? Which one is better? Which one is easier? Right? Now, yeah, maybe concrete uh, looks, uh, I would say, uh, a little bit more expensive there, but it doesn't require maintenance as much as a steel girder will do. But remember, also, you are designing in a reality context. So we got the ground information. So what about if that bridge right, that you're placing, it's on a mountain area. Is it easy to transfer there a prefabricated beam? Maybe not. Maybe I need to do a cast-in-place bridge. So all these options could be weighted from the very beginning, just right picking the bridge, right? So one more time, it's a good way to start your project, uh, evaluating all the different alternatives and presenting that to your owner. One more time, the bridge is done, right? So what could be the next step? Well, the 3D model is nice, but I need to produce plans too, right? So, well, how do I produce plans? Do I need to draw the whole thing again, right? So how from a 3D model, I can get a typical section? From this 3D model, get this section, measure it, right? I did it only in 3D, but I don't do my plans like that. I know the plans in plan view, elevation view, section view, right? So how do I uh, do all of that? So, uh, well, that's a good question as, as we're going here. So do we, if we use this, right, in plans production, do we need a drafter? Yes, of course, you still need a drafter. But the thing is that your work will be way more efficient because the drafter doesn't need to draw the bridge again. Again, what we're trying to avoid is the repeated work, but make the work of the professionals going into the bridge to be more efficient, right? So you think about it, why we need analytical software if I have my calculator too, right? Well, we make more efficient if we use analytical software, right? So it's the same thing. You know, why we use this? Well, I mean, if you, again, uh, to be uh, this bridge as it is right now, you can actually model it all in MicroStation, right? Can you? Of course, you can do it all in MicroStation. Piece by piece, you can build every single solid and do it all in MicroStation. On the other hand, would it be more efficient if you use Open Bridge Designer? Of course. And that's why we use these automated solutions. Because not only you do the bridge one time, you start doing modifications, you start connecting with other professionals. So the idea is not to replace professionals, but get more these professionals that are getting into our bridge, the drafter, the, re, the detailer, the structural engineer, the project engineer, to make it more efficient and make better decisions. Right? So that's the idea. Now, on this 3D model now, to do these plans, how do I do it? So just basically go and cut a section, right? Or cut maybe a longitudinal section, right? So in that case, I'm doing a longitudinal cut along the bridge. So what do I'm getting when I cut along the alignment? Well, I think you can easily identify that this is what? Your plan elevation view, right? So now, how you do this without this tool? Usually that process is hand drafting, right? You just copy and then you start drafting the different elevations all along the profile. Here is just an extraction view of the 3D model, right? So 
that is that advantage. And we call these dynamic views because that is not a static cut. What it is, is just a reference of the 3D model, a different view of the 3D model, if you want to think that way, right? Now, we have automated this process a little bit more because it's not only a cut, right? And like, for example, here, that's a dynamic section. So instead of cutting before a longitudinal one, I can cut one just perpendicular to the alignment, right? And just say, well, now this is going to be, oh, I select the abundance. So it will be an abundance. And that's it, right? So this is an extraction of that 2D, uh, excuse me, that extraction of that 3D model. So do we need a drafter to draw all of these line by line, dimension by dimension? Again, no, right? This is exactly extraction from the 3D model, right? An accurate and the exact same uh, 3D model uh, f f extracted from that. I mean, the, the 2D view was extracted from that 3D model. Right? Now, this is an extraction. This is a dynamic one. And we call it dynamic because if you modify the model, this is just another view. So your abutment may get longer, may get taller. So it's just a direct reference to it. Now, do we still need... Uh, to annotate this sheet, of course, right? So we need to apply text elevations, we need to dimension, we need to put general notes, we need to put a, a sheet to it. Yes, so we can do all of that. Now, can we automate this process a little bit more, right? So yes, we have automated this process a little bit more. Like for example, you wanna create a a typical section sheet. So you can define actual sheets with your uh, frame, uh, a cell, right? Uh, a micro station cell will be the frame with all your annotations. You can play with the scales, right? And just cut that section, right? So even though everything is one-to-one, -one, we need to adjust the scales because of the text sizes and then you will have your section there, right? And all these dimensions, yeah, it maybe need to be adjusted by uh, the engineer. Maybe you don't want to annotate all of them. You can still hide it. So you have the advantage of being, of doing this in a microstation environment, right? You can still take full advantage of the microstation commands, reference files, clip boundary, clip mask, uh, dimension styles. So, you know, this is nothing different than creating a microstation sheet. So, and that's what we have automated this process in general in uh, in OpenBridge. So, you you can really do it now. Now, and what about these annotations? The beauty of that is that annotations are dynamic because we're referencing the model. So look, for example, in this case, I'm going to change the the pile cap depth that is supposed to be five feet, right? That five feet here, look what it changed. I changed the model and my dimension changed it automatically. So this is the use of dimension styles, but dynamics, right? So then you got the point that as we modify the model, the sheets will get modified automatically. So that's, of course, that's make your job more efficient. And if all these sheets are referencing, right, you only need to do this process once. And yes, still you need maybe to move the section into into the sheet, uh, comply with reference files, maybe use different blowouts for scales that you need to do. So you can take advantage one more time to all of these uh, microstation elements, right? So that's one of the usage to do it for, uh, for drawing generation. Now, if you have multiple sheets, of course, you can also do it with 
our plan and profile sheets. Like, remember that plan elevation sheet, but what about you want to put it all, all along the profile? So, well, this is what we provide to you, and it, this is called the dynamic cut. So this tool, alignment and visualizing the profile, as you place this dynamic cut or 3D cut in the profile view, we're going to cut along the profile everything we see and we want to place it here. So it could be utilities, it could be maybe a 3D soil boring, but in our case, it happens to be that along that profile, we have our bridge, our bridge being placed. So what we show, the bridge. And then you got a, an accurate plan elevation view all along the profile. And then if you define the sheets, plan profile sheets, plan sheets, profile sheets, so we got enough tools in OpenBridge to do that. And this, telling you through, is the same tool that the roadway people are using. You know, it's cutting plan and profile sheets. In our site on bridge, the only difference is that, well, there is a bridge, but there is the same process of cutting plan and profile sheets. Right? So this is one thing that as well that uh, you can do. Right? So answering one of the questions here is that, yes, directly from the structural model will generate most of the plan sheets. Well, I would say yes, but I have to make in this uh, uh, in this answer a little bit of a uh, precision there. This is what we generate here. This is what we call the physical model, right? And is that from that physical model, that accurate model that has coordinates, I mean real coordinates, is following the alignment, is following the profile. That's from that model that we extract all these sheets. Right, the structural model is the one for calculations. Is the one that I don't care if the Florida Pier has a parabolic ending at the top. Really, it doesn't matter for structural calculations, right? At the end of the day, that Florida Pier, for example, is just uh, area, moment of inertia, torsion factors. That's it, right? That's internally. That's what it computes with. He doesn't care that he has a rustication in the center or a parabolic ending or anything like that. But for the physical model, it matters. And for your plants, of course, it matters. You need to show that on your plants. So it is from the physical model, from that accurate representation of the bridge, that we get these calculations. Right? So what else can we do? I mean, we're getting into more detail plants production, no pun intended here, but what about rebar detailing, right? So that 3D model that we got, we need to detail it. And the tool to use for that is pro structures. So with pro structure, again, working inside uh, with a DGN file. I mean, again, it's a Bentley product. So pro structure details all that rebar in um, using a DGN file, right, we can get all these detailed information in 3D. So we will detail in 3D and using the same concept of dynamic views, we will compose the 2D sheets that, that we need to, right? So how we do that, right? So for example, right here, I am inside pro structures. Right? So, so in pro structures, what I did, I just reference microstation reference file, my 3D model. So at this time, there is nothing live on the file. There is no rebar, anything yet. This is just a 3D model, a reference 3D model, my bridge 3D model. So then I go with the pro structures tools, right? And being a bridge, we recognize that this is concrete and just annotate it, right? We recognize that this concrete block is not just that, it's actually a footing. And we annotate it as such. That's why we use the footing tools in pro structures. And we recognize that it's maybe also a combined footing. So then, and we annotate it as such. 
right? And then, again, we're doing 3D rebar detailing for Liquic. And then I just can keep going. Now, all these bars, of course, as you can see, they have uh, diameter, right? Spacing, the hooks that I want to use. So that's how I annotate. And then I can annotate the entire bridge and make it follow the standards that I need to. Right? Apply covers. So I don't need to do many microstation commands or drafting commands to account for all the information that I need to place. And adjust the quantities too. Right? Now, you could say, what about if I need to do just one bar modification? You can do that too. Right? But the bulk of the reinforcement could be done fairly quick with pro structures. See the shape? This is rectangular? No. This concrete now is a circular column. Right? And we're going to annotate it as such. And all the dimensions, the extensions, the dowels that we want to put, the, the stirrups that I want to put, maybe they are spiral stirrups or not, you can just do this fairly quick. Right? So now, other than that, if I keep annotating this, right, I can also decide to switch to that one and say, look, maybe the model is different, right? So I need to cut a sheet. So we can do that. And as I annotate this, right, decide to, sorry, here, decide to, okay, I got this and cut the sheet. Right? I can cut the sheet actually even with OBM. So like for example here, I got no rebar, uh, but then now if I have it, then I will have the rebar there in a 2D view. Right? And then when I do that, accommodate the sheet as I need to, place labels, and just get a full annotation sheet with this. And at the end, compose the sheet that I need. The beauty of that is that as we know, or since we know what we place, oh, this is a 25 millimeter bar, this is a number eight bar, right? So we just label it automatically because we know what we're placing from the 3D. So that circle that you see is not just a circle that I draw, it's an extraction, it's a reference view of that 3D model. And I'm able to detail all of that. So you ask me that you still need a drafter? Yes, of course. You still need somebody to dress up uh, your sheets, place all these annotations. But instead of typing this in a text field, right? That's what you do. You just use ProStructure tools to quickly annotate. And when you do it once, if this bar size changes because your model changes, because your structural model, your structural calculations change, this bar, instead of being a number four, maybe it's a number six, that text that you place is being recognized and it will switch automatically to a number six, for example. Accounting for all of that, it means that I can just generate quantities fairly quick. Right? So... And with that, you will have defined the entire process, right? You got 2D plans, you got quantities, you got reports. So, well, you're ready to submit your work, right? And that will be still the traditional work in which we submit PDF documents or paper plans, right? But what about more? What about if I want more information to it, right? Um, so, what about if I still want to... Uh, to add extra information, not just for my 2D plans, but actually adding extra data, right? So this extra data is what we call the beam properties, the extra beam properties, in which we go to these terms LOD, level of development, 500 or above, in which we need what we call to augment the model, add extra information that is not, uh, I would say, CAD-related information, right, uh, to, the, to the model itself, right? So that process is 
for example, one way to do it is add extra information that doesn't belong to it, right? So I got the peer, but for example, I want to see my soil boring report. So that comes on a PDF document, for example. So I can just add a link or embed that PDF file into a particular element. So many different options here. One is to, like I'm doing here, is attach it as a document. So the actual PDF document will be attached to that microstation element. It's no link, it's just right there all inside. So when I need it, I just double click and that's the report attached to that column, not attached to the file, attached to that particular column, right? I need a specification sheet, okay? I can add another PDF document, maybe for the bearings that it needs to have a specific one. And with the enough microstation tools that we're providing OBM, that PDF document that you see, I could, that I done it here, it could be embedded into the document, it could be also a external link into that. Right, so you can do that as as well. Right, that's one way to what we call augment the model. Right, but what about extra properties? You know, extra properties that there is no way to attach a PDF document. But for example, on a rebar, information that it's actually one become part of the element, but they are not much of design anymore. Like, you know, in rebar, we know the number of bars, the quality of the bars, but what about all this extra information that really doesn't belong to design, it's more on construction, right? So that is what we call the LOD 500, 600, in which this extra information, manufacturer type, serial number, doesn't come into play way after the design process. It's more on the construction reporting, right? So how you get all that information in not to a file, not to a specification sheet, but to the actual element itself, actual, the actual modeled element, right? And then all of that models are fed with extra intelligence when we use what we call in Bentley, the item types. And item types are very powerful because you can define any property, any property that you want to add to a particular element. I'm not going to say open bridge element. I would say any DGN element that could be in open roads, in open site, open flow, open bridge as well. Right? This technology of item types is present in any Bentley product. So this extra intelligence that you want to add to the models, right? you can just do it. For example, here, I finish the bridge and then I have this beam seat that, well, just right now, this beam seat itself is just a microstation solid element. But I wanted to this element internally to have the information that this bearing needs to be done or needs to be purchased from ranking bearings technology. And that is the serial number that was installed on the field and that was the installation date. So it's just a matter of attaching this property. So if we think about the old car standards, it's like attaching level, color, weight, line style, but now I attach my own property. And that my own property is called bearing manufacturer that I define through an item type. So when I request that information, I will see the normal CAT standards, right? Level, color, weight, but then more, because now this solid element is made by ranking bearings, that is the serial number, and that is the installation date that I use. So that is the power of that item types in which I can create my own elements, right? And uh, add this extra information there. Right? So, what else can I use? My model. I mean, this looks really pretty, right? But then what about visualization and animation? Right? I got my bridge there, but then I want to position that in a space. I want to see that, well, okay, I got the ground information, but where is that bridge actually? Well, in that latest technology, right, what we have is what is called 
the interaction with big maps. So if you have the proper geographical coordinates attached to your uh, file, so we know in a space where this actually is, right? So in this case, this project was in the projected state plane coordinates of North Carolina, I think. It's part of the file. Usually the seed files will come attached with it, depending on the DOT that uh, you work with. But if it's not, you have to find out just what is the uh, state projection that your file needs to use. In this case, for this project, I find out that was, of course, in North America and in, uh, oh, that was the Mississippi project, I'm sorry. That was in Mississippi, and that is the state projection that it was used for that particular project, right? So I just attach that to the file. I don't need to do much, just attach that to the file. So now not only the file will have the coordinates, but the actual projection or the projected coordinates the geographical coordinates there. And that's it, that's all that I need to do because now, knowing this, I can go to my uh, just view and say on the background that I want to see the aerial photography available. I want to see the street map available. And that's what we call the background map. That is actually the big map. So I can go street map, I can go aerial or hybrid, right? So now I can really see my bridge in a reality context. And that's where the bridge is located. Right? Uh, maybe better if I use the aerial view. And now I really see where the bridge is located. So just as simple as that. Right? So... We call this designing in a reality context. Now, stopping here, let me ask you answer one of the questions here is that uh, that the reference to reference the bridge to the open roads designer is 2D or 3D because ORD makes a 2D and a 3D model as the roadway engineer works. Uh, you're, 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 you're right. You know, the alignment, the alignment, for example, in open roads is done first in 2D, right? And actually, that's right here. The alignment is in 2D. But the moment that this alignment gets a profile, so then open roads automatically develops the 3D model, right? Because now it's associating the alignment flat with a profile that has elevations, so we have that. Well, it works exactly the same in open roads, in open bridge, right? So some of the elements that they don't need to be 3D, we place it in 2D, in a flat bottom. For example, the location of here, of my piers, all these lines, right, are the location of these piers. We don't need to put it in 3D. They know that they go along the alignment at a particular station. But the, but the moment that I assign that, hey, this, is a, this flat alignment has a profile, it becomes 3D. When I place a pier or a deck, well, the deck goes along the 3D, so it's just placing automatically into the 3D model. But still, we conserve the 2D representations, like the support lines, the beam layout. These green lines are the beam guidelines or the beam layout. They don't need to be in 3D. We just need to know the horizontal location. The vertical is given by the deck, it's given by the caps, all of that. So it's the same workflow. Now, what you need to reference up to you. If you're having, if you're working in roadway, and you need to reference the bridge, I will just maybe just reference the three D model. That's all I need. I don't need to reference the the two D model that it creates too. Right. So it's it's up to you how you want to work. But in general, that is that is the standard workflow. We work some elements in two D. The ones that require just only two D information, we do it in the two D model. But by the moment we put elevations to it, like the deck, it goes automatically into a default 3D model and it keeps working that way, right? So that's uh, for your question right there. Now, I got this model, I got the context view, what else can I do with it, right? So maybe the bridge is done like this one, 
I need to render the bridge. I mean, I need to apply the pre-picture, I need to apply materials. Certainly, you can do it inside the OpenBridge environment, right? And so, well, it's just a matter of clicking LumenRT. So you click LumenRT, and it will just launch internally the LumenRT version that is inside OpenBridge and uh, generate for you this model. And then that will be in LumenRT that you can apply the modeling environment, the lighting effects, the materials effects if you want. So the beauty of that is that this visual, visualized model in Lumen is also synchronized with OpenBridge. So if I add all the materials here in Lumen, and then I need to modify my bridge type or my bridge or my uh, peer geometry, I can do that and my 3D model in Lumen will also get updated. And then maybe the hammerhead, the single peer here will have a bigger table and all that, right? So that's also what we can do with it. And then add more and more stuff as you get more proficient with Lumen, I get some pretty pictures like that as well, right? So this will be dealing with the 3D model. And then going back to the question, can OBN make a 2D and a 3D file? Yes, it, it does that. You know, as I said before, it does the 2D elements, the ones that it needs to be only 2D, like the support lines or the beam lines, and it will make a 3D model on the stuff that it needs to be 3D. So just to get this, if I go to a live file here, look, this is 3D, this is a top view, but then actually you look at the models here, right? It could be a default model that is done in 2D and 3D. So it's just a matter of you checking this. And as well, when you go to uh, your reference files, right, we reference both. See, this is the corridor file in 3D and the corridor file in 2D. So we reference both, we reference both automatically here, right? So that's what uh, we can do. Ooh, we're running out of time. So now to recap this, right? This is all what we can do on uh, in our models here, right? And as well, just to summarize this process, this is all the information that you're gonna be dealing with, right? OpenBridge Designer will just go and take care of the modeling, physical or being modeling, whatever name you wanna call it. The structural design will be handled by our structural software. So somebody asked uh, during this uh, presentation, then what about the uh, FEM analysis and all of that? Well, this is handled here by our analytical solution. So the physical model, the being model, when it's transferred to our analytical solutions, internally will become analytical. And then you will decide to apply maybe a FEM model to calculate these steel girders. Or maybe, you know, it's a segmental bridge and we need FEM for that, so RM bridge will do it, right? But that information will be completely automated going back and forth. Then when we finish that, we can go to details, plans and production and still use the power of microstation inside the modeler and the detailing features in pro structures. The advantage is that we only managing one format, basically, that is the DGN format, okay? And then that DGN or that iModel, the iModel is basically a read-only DGN file, we just transfer to construction or the owner and they will just basically take it from there, right? So, and that's all I have for you, just, uh, uh, Thank you for attending us. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.